good morning. Praise the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Grace, peace, and mercy to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that's with us. Happy Sabbath in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, family, this, uh, this topic today is for dust we are and to the dust we shall return. Um, simply put, because man have a tendency to forget where he come from. Um, man has a tendency to forget what he is really made from, you know, what he really is. Um, none of us are, none of us should be lifted up with pride. None of us should be arrogant, you know, um, but when we were living in sin, we had those characteristics, and the reason being is because we didn't know the God of heaven and earth. We didn't know the God of Israel. Um, but once you come into this truth and you begin to learn about your, your master in heaven, then you understand exactly what you are. You understand your place. And it's scary, you know, because it, it puts the fear of the most high in your heart. The heart is this, not this. Um, it puts the, the fear of the Lord in your mind, you know, so that you walk straight when you remember who you are. You know, they just came out with this uh, this Lion King movie, uh, reanimated. Um, my wife went to go see it. I don't care for Disney because to me, Disney is pure evil. All the major movie companies are evil, you know, if you want to be technical. But um, I have a special hatred for Disney in my heart. But anyway, um, so I didn't see it, but my wife saw it, and she was telling me about it yesterday uh, before the Sabbath. And um, there was a part I remember in the uh, original Lion King movie where uh, Mufasa was in the heavens and he was talking to Simba, and he said, remember, you know, uh, remember who you are and all this type of stuff. Well, that's what the Lord is telling us through his word. You know, he's telling man, remember who you are. Remember what you're made from. You know, don't let your heart cause you to sin against me. And then I have to end up busting your head wide open, you know. So we're going to jump straight into this. But we just need to understand that, you know, you have a lot of proud, proud people in the world. A lot of prideful people in the world. A lot of arrogant, you know, can't tell them nothing. Can't even try to encourage them to do the right thing because they don't want to hear it you know but the lord let us know through his word that when he come he gonna humble everybody that's proud and lifted up uh me and a beloved brother was just talking the other day um about the the most high second coming and when he come he just going him and the saints just going to be hovering in, in the air in the sky and People are going to be running for the hills, just like it was in the movie Independence Day. Same thing. The Lord just going to be hovering, brothers and sisters, and people are going to be running for the hills, man. The very rich people, they're going to be running for their underground bunkers. The poor people amongst the earth, they're going to be running to hide and lock in they, they bomb shelters or their tornado shelters or in their closets in their houses. But nothing is, is you know, nothing is hidden from the Most High, you understand? God see everything. So, like I said, people acting so tough against God now, you see, because God is long-suffering and he's trying to win them to Christ. He's trying to save their souls from burning with the fallen angels. Man don't want to listen. I'm not talking about the saints. I'm talking about the majority of the world. I'm talking about the, you know, the ones that practice evil, okay? The ones that you can't tell nothing. Because, look, there's some sinners in the world that are meek, okay? Just as some of us were when, before we got into this truth. We were sinning against the Most High, but we were meek. We were kind, right? So when the Lord called us, we came. There's other sinners like that, okay? I'm not justifying sin. I'm saying that they're sinning. They going, if they don't repent, they're going to be in serious trouble. But what I'm telling you is there are some sinners that are humble, okay? And when the Lord calls them through the preaching of his word, they're going to come. But the majority are not. They're going to keep doing evil, keep on eating swine's flesh, which is pork. They're going to keep on breaking the Lord's Sabbath day. They're going to keep on doing whatever they want to do. 
and they gonna say God knows my heart we gonna check that out today because God do know us I mean he knows us brothers and sisters he knows man very delicately very intimately that's how he can tell us everything about ourselves and the way that we think in his holy word that is another reason why people don't want to read this Bible they don't want to submit to it because the Bible is the truth God tell you straight to your face what you're thinking before you even know that it's on your mind you see what I'm saying this God is not playing okay we're gonna start this in Proverbs 21 in verse 30 but sisters please cover your heads brothers uncover your heads first Corinthians 11 2 through 16 is the reference point you know it's a I mean it's an eye-opener when you understand man we're dust breathing the breath of life breathing with God's breath man is so puffed up man to lie to the world talking about now we're 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 breathing based on the oxygen that the trees give off stop it lies man if that's the case how come man is still dying the trees ain't gone nowhere so how come man is still dying every day it has nothing to do with the trees brothers and sisters when the lord inhale somebody die okay somebody give up the ghost like a, like Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes no man can retain the spirit within himself when man die right the spirit go back to the one who gave it and man return to his home which is the earth dust by the fourth day he start to decay he start to rot the flesh come up off these bones and the man turn to dust and all that's left is bones We need to understand this. Ain't no reason for, even those of us in the body of Christ, ain't no reason for none of us to get lifted up with pride. We starting to look down on each other. We starting to uh, show favoritism. I've been checking that out this past week within the body of Christ on Facebook. It's a whole lot of disrespect of persons going on, man. Why? The Lord told you he hates that. That's despicable, man. You in the body of Christ, you're supposed to love all your brothers and sisters. All is absolute. Now we're not talking about people that's outside the camp. You love them too, but they that's not they're not part of the bride yet. But as far as the bride of Christ goes, you're supposed to love your brothers and sisters with a very deep love. Praying for them, fasting for them, etc. But I find it strange. I'm looking inside the body of Christ that I can see, you know, around me. And I'm seeing respect of persons, favoritism, clicks. Ain't nothing wrong with having a you know a best bud in the body of Christ. But what's up with the respect of persons? Another brother or sister reach out to you and try to talk to you. You shun them because they're not part of your little clique. If you don't repent, brothers and sisters, you're gonna you're gonna pay for that. Cause the Lord don't like that. But there's no reason for us to be lifted up with pride. None at all. There's no reason for us to be arrogant in the body of Christ. It don't matter how much God is teaching you or have shown you that, and it may be meat from his word, you still should never get puffed up, man. You still should never think that you're something that you're not. And what we are, brothers and sisters, we are dirt. We, the Lord remind us on a daily basis. I mean, for real. As bad as these uh, rap artists think that they are, boasting about their wealth that the Lord then gave them, right? Boasting about their status in the community. When they go take a bath or a shower every day, as they as they put it, we, we about to get fresh, I'm fresh to death and all this. Yeah, when they go in that bathroom and they get in that shower and they get in that tub, when they get out, it'd be a ring around the tub. You know why? Because we are dirt. So why get why get puffed up? Why 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 deceive your own self to think that you're something that you're not? 
and look at the privilege that the Most High has granted to mankind to say, man, if you walk humbly with me and you walk after my law, statutes, and commandments, I'm going to make you into what I am. You're going to be my, you're going to become my physical children. See, right now, even those of us that serve God in, in spirit and in truth, we are known as his children on a, on a um, title level. But when he come, he going to give us a body to match the title. But that's only going to be granted to the meek. That's only going to be granted to those that have humbled themselves, remembered, like Mufasa told Simba, remember who you are. Yeah, we remember. Oh, Lord, I'm dirt. I'm nothing. What great love is this that my king would die for me to save me from going to hellfire? What great love is this that he will wash away all my past transgressions and forgive my sins? They were many. Who is this that has mercy on me on a daily basis by sending his Holy Spirit to wake me up every morning? He said his mercies are new with the rising of the sun. This is the mindset we got to have, brothers and sisters. We got to pay attention. It's a lot of people that's arrogant for no reason. You be looking at them. You know how the world got this saying, and I'm going to start the lesson here shortly. But you, you know the world got a saying, man, you put your, your pant legs on the same way I do. Or you take a piss or you crap just like I do every day. So then you think to yourself, but why is man so puffed up? Because Satan had filled their minds with vanity and they have allowed him to. That's why they've been deceived. And they don't think that they've been deceived. But that's why it's up to us, brothers and sisters, in the body of Christ to go out with this word in spirit and in truth, in power of the Holy Ghost. The angel of the Lord being with us. We got to go out and we got to try to, to persuade these people. Because we understand the terror of the Lord, man. The Lord, when he come, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when he come, he just going to be, for a second, he, him and the saints just going to be hovering in the air, in the sky. He going to be standing on the cloud. That saints going to be with him. That holy angels going to be with him. It's just going to be this great multitude, exceeding great army. The sinners that's left on the earth, they going to be crying for fear. They're going to be, I'm telling you, the Bible let us know they're going to be running for the hills. The rich people going to be running for their underground bunkers. The poor people going to be running in their houses, trying to hide from God and the saints and the holy angels. It's not going to work. So here's the, here's the point before we get started. Why be puffed up now and have to face the wrath of the lamb when he comes? When you can just believe the word now you believe in writings that's telling you don't believe in the Bible. Now, why would you believe a writing that's telling you not to believe in the Bible when it was written by someone who thinks just like you? He got a carnal mind just like you. Why not cast that off? Say, you know what? I'm going to believe in that King James Version Bible. I'm going to study to show myself approved. I'm going to believe in the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his son, the God of Israel. It's one Lord. It's one God. I'm going to believe in the Godhead. I'm going to repent for my sins because I am sorry that I have sinned against my God. I didn't even know some of these commandments. Hey, the Lord will have mercy. Get right with your God while there's time. In Corinthians chapter 6, I forget if it's first or second, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. You can get passed over by the Most High right now. And then you got to walk unleavened seven days, okay? Meaning just walk in his laws until your life is complete. Until either you give up the ghost or until Messiah come back. You can do this, man. Why, why face the wrath of the Lamb on that day? You don't have to. Just do what you got to do now. Get straight now. You can be saved from that. But we all got choices, right? Proverbs 21 and verse 30. They say, there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. So when you want, when, when the saints, let me say it this way. When the saints got real understanding, let's go to Genesis 1. When the saints got real understanding and knowledge and wisdom and were able to counsel people on, on personal matters, where do you think it come from? It come from the Most High. Man that knows how to build houses and cut grass and 
build on cars and make airplanes and all this type of stuff. Where do you think that understanding comes from? The Lord. You see that the Lord has given us everything. That's why I say, I forget exactly where in the scriptures they say, who, I think it's in Romans, who have first given to God and God owed this person back? God have given us everything, brothers and sisters. He have formed dirt to look like him, the first man did anyway. Put his breath in this dirt body that he made, this mud body. Gave the mud body understanding, wisdom, knowledge. It grants the mud body peace. You see, oh my gosh, I hope somebody understands what I'm trying to say. Man, God do everything for us. Except the part that he left for us to do, which is to obey him. Because he gave us choice, or you could say free will. Our free will is to do his will. That's why he gave it to us. So that we could choose not to do what we want to do, but to do what he wants us to do. Because when we do what he wants us to do, he will give us peace. He will bless us. There's no wisdom, no counsel, no understanding against the Lord. None. Okay? Genesis 1 and verse 26. It's saying, God said, let us make man in our image. This is Jehovah talking, the same one who came in the flesh and that we know as Christ. This is him talking on behalf of the Father. Talking on behalf of the, of the, the Father who is part of the Godhead as well. It's two in the Godhead, not three. Okay? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, God decided, I want to make man. And I want him to look like me and I want him to rule over the whole earth, everything that's in, inside of this dome. Okay this flat earth so called flat earth but it is not spinning we know that we don't we don't live on a spinning ball but man was created to rule over everything the lord had made hmm? 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them brothers and sisters he did not create man androgynous okay man was not both sexes like the baphomet okay the Lord, it's the way that the Lord talks. He created man and he created the woman. And the woman was created from the man, as we're going to see. Okay. And from women come men and women. Hopefully I, that didn't confuse you. Verse 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Let's go to chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I remember one time I, I was doing an illustration for my mother because she's deaf and for my stepdad because he's deaf as well. And I was explaining this to them, how God made man in the beginning. And I took a napkin and I crumbled it up like I was making it, creating it. And then I laid it down and I and then I took a step back and looked at it and then I blew on it like that. And then I showed them and I took the napkin and I stood it up like it was standing up. And I said, that's how God created man. He formed him. Man was just a dead soul just laying there. Looks, his splitting image looked just like God. Okay? Just in the form of a, of a clay image, a mud image. God took a step back, said he misses something. Blew in his nostrils. That's why we got these puncture holes right here. Man stood up. Thinking. Brain functioning. Body mobilized. Perfect. That's what the Lord did. Right? Verse, uh, the latter part of verse 7. It says, And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Because we are the soul. That's why the Lord said in Leviticus 5, If the soul shall hear swearing and if the soul shall uh, touch anything that's unclean, if the soul sin through ignorance, if the soul do this. Now, how you got a soul stuffed inside, inside of you? Now, majority of us used to believe that. Why? Because the whole world been duped by the Roman Catholic Church, the mother of harlots. Okay? Mystery Babylon. 
we all been duped by her in some way, form, or fashion. Okay? So, but that's not the case. We don't have a soul stuffed inside of us. Man is not made of three parts. Man is the soul with the spirit of, of God in his nostrils. That's how we breathe. And when God called that spirit back, it come up out of that man, and man die, and he go back to the dirt. Man, when he die, he don't go to heaven if he was good, and he don't go to some place being barbecued by the devil if he was bad. Simplicity, brothers and sisters. We got to get away from the fables. Let's uh, keep reading verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So man was created outside of the Garden of Eden, or paradise, and put into paradise. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, now pay attention, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now these two trees that he named, they're not fruit, regular fruit trees, they're people. We're going to see that. Let's skip over to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. All the regular fruit trees you can eat. Okay? Even the tree of life. How do we know? Watch this. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. This is the second commandment. That the Most High gave to man. Because the first commandment he gave us was to be fruitful and multiply. A brother asked me one time, do you think condoms are, are a sin? Do you think it's bad you know, to put on a condom? Absolutely. I used to do it when I was living in sin. But that was when I was a fornicator. You see? But putting on a condom is not, you're not supposed to do that neither. A woman being on birth control? No. The Lord said be fruitful and multiply. You don't think... What's the first scripture we read? Is there any counsel, wisdom, or understanding against the Lord? You don't think the Lord can stop a woman from having babies if he wanted to? Didn't he give us record of that in the word? So, the first commandment that he gave man, be fruitful and multiply. The second, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Who is it, brothers and sisters? We're going to find out. Let's keep reading. Uh... It says, verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me uh, for him. And out of the ground the Lord, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. So who named all the animals? Adam did. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Now, if you do your research, you'll fit, you'll find out it was the lower left rib in man's rib cage because that's the only rib that actually grows back on its own, even after it's been taken out. So the Lord showed showed us that He's the master surgeon. Okay, um, He can heal. Okay, because Adam wasn't walking around broken after that. Okay, he was regular. Um, the Lord is, is wonderful. Um, verse 22 And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So, woman was made out of man's left rib, his bone. You know, that, that reminds me of something. When a man gets wounded by a woman, like when she leaves him or she hurts him in a serious way, no wonder it really hurts down there. You know, it hurts to the pit of your stomach, you know, for a man. Just something, just food for thought. Uh, 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So when a man take a wife, he got to get up out of his mommy and daddy house. Because that's what the Lord said. You got to get out of your parents' house and cleave to your wife. Y'all got to make your own. Okay? All the animals do the same thing. Common sense. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Right? Now, we're not going to read the whole chapter 3, but we need to understand the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the devil. Okay? Satan was in the garden. And if you want to know what Satan looks like, read uh, Isaiah, um, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 28. 
okay and also read uh, read Ezekiel chapter 1 okay now the only difference between uh, Satan's physical body he's a cherub angel but the only difference between him and the other cherub angels is uh, Satan's body had all the precious stones you know the diamond the barrel the sapphire onyx ruby all that was his outer covering okay and his voice is as the instruments of music that's the only difference but he basically because angels can transform themselves okay to appear like whatever they want to so um and paul told us that in the testimony but satan was in the garden and uh he he transformed himself he must have looked like a, a young handsome brother you know because he didn't look like a cherub angel otherwise they would have been freaked out okay now he went up and he was talking to the woman he tricked her basically told her that you know god didn't tell them everything you can read it on your own but long story short she believed she was tricked she believed him she brought it to adam adam rolled with it he wasn't tricked but he went with it sin came into the world they found out they was naked god started questioning him he laid down the punishments now let's look at uh genesis 3 and verse 22 and the lord god said behold the man has become as one of us to know good and evil or you could say to know the difference between good and evil because before that man only knew good okay and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life who's the tree of life you can read in revelation it's jesus it's the christ okay and eat and live forever so dust we are and to the dust we shall return right now the latter part is only there because man sinned if man would have never sinned man would still be living forever as it was supposed to have been done so the lord had so much mercy on this man that he didn't want man to talk to him while he was still in the garden after he had sinned because if man would have spoken to the tree of life he would have gained understanding on how to live forever and then he would have been stuck a sinner forever and how can you die for something that lives forever so on our way to learning something that's why the angels the fallen angels that's why they hate man so much because when the angels sin there's no forgiveness granted to them god don't have mercy on them there is no atonement for a fallen angel but for fallen man there is an atonement because man can die see and god couldn't die for man that's why god had to become man to die for man you see okay now let's go to hebrews chapter one so man messed up god fixed it he came in the flesh he saved man from heaven to pay for his crimes pay for his own sins by going to hellfire the lake of fire at the very end but jesus also through his blood we have forgiveness of our past sins okay the father forgives us by the blood of his son okay but you got to believe and you got to get baptized in jesus name and start walking in god's commandments because not walking in god's commandments is what put jesus on the cross and that began with what we just read with adam because sin came into the world through adam through his disobedience even that's why jesus is referred to as the second adam because just like adam looked like the most high jesus when he was in the flesh looked just like the most high okay even the father just like adam was given specific commandments jesus was given specific commandments okay so and just like at the first adam was tempted the second adam was tempted also but the second adam didn't sin even though he was tempted so hebrews chapter one it says god who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds so this same christ that came in the flesh is the word made flesh he's the same god that we've been dealing with in genesis the same one that was talking the one that we read where he said and god said let us make man in our image that was jehovah talking the son the christ the messiah the high priest it was him we didn't read it but the same one who killed the two animals and took their their skins and clothed adam and eve showing his grace right he took the blood of those animals 
and he made an atonement before the father so that Adam and Eve could be forgiven and even their seed after them and that lasted all the way up until the flood that's why after the flood when Noah and them came off the ark Noah did some, some animal sacrificing to cover him, his wife and his sons and their wives so the father indirectly made everything but he did it through his son Jehovah is the creator direct creator Jesus who is the name of the father he indirectly did it he spoke to his son and his son did it plain and simple who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power so remember this title for dust we are unto the dust we shall return if if God just stop caring everything would die literally everything would just evaporate into nothing and the only thing left would be the Godhead as it once was so the word is upholding everything by his power and you you see man is so silly man don't understand this and he don't want to fear the, the living God all things are in his hand who will you run to to save you from God? Who going, who are you going to run to to ask them for help to fight against God and you think you going you got to stand a chance? God is sovereign, brothers and sisters. He control everything. We need to understand this. It's let me read it again. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high talking about Christ being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they for unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son this day have I begotten thee this for the Jehovah's Witnesses to which of the angels since they want to preach that uh, Jesus is Michael coming to flesh Read this and weep. Which of the angels did the Most High say you are my son today? And again, I will be a, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth the first, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And they did. We we can read that in the book of Matthew. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. And we can read that also. That's in Psalms and many other places. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So the Father is talking to the Son and said, Your throne, O God. Wait a minute. If the Son was created, how could he be God? He wasn't created. He's the same God we've been dealing with since Genesis. The same one who formed man from the dust of the earth and punctured the two holes in his what we call the nose and breathe into it the breath of life and man became a living soul this is the same one the same one came in the flesh and let Israel beat him up let the Romans beat him up put him on the cross and he died to save the world from having to go to the lake of fire to whosoever believes in him and repents and gets baptized and keeps the law this is the same one the son did all this Okay. Verse 9, thou hast loved, and we could read that verse in Psalms too. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, wait a minute, wait a minute. We on we learning something on the way to learning something, brothers and sisters. How could this one coming in the flesh be God, but even have somebody who's above him called God? People don't understand this. It says Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, even your God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So the Christ got a God? That's right. But even when he was God, there was a God above him. But they both are equally God. Equally called God, I should say. When Jesus came in the flesh, he, why do you think he came in that name? He didn't come in his own name, which was Jehovah. He came in Jesus' name because the Father was getting glory for himself. Look, 
sometimes this dust mind that we got because we are dirt sometimes we don't understand these things because maybe it's because we got too much sand in our head okay that's why we gotta clear ourselves out we gotta fast we gotta pray we gotta seek the most high because we get clogged up sometimes okay let's keep going though it says and thou lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work the works of thine hands who did this the son did jesus the christ they shall perish but thou remainest and they all shall wax old as doth the garment and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up and they shall be changed but thou art the same and thy years shall not fail but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for for them who shall be heirs of salvation the angel's job is to minister to this dirt body with the breath of god in it so that we can get salvation you see the, the blessing that the most high has given this dirt body man who is dirt therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard which we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip don't let this word slip out of your brains brothers and sisters out of your heart retain it hold on to it this got to be the most important thing to you personally jesus said for in matthew 6 21 for where your treasure is for where your treasure is there will your heart be also whatever you care about the most that's where your mind is constantly going to be at think about it for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will you reject this word brothers and sisters what kind of punishments you think you deserve we i look i'm even talking to you that say that you believe in the christ you believe in god but you refuse to keep his commandments i'm talking to you how what kind of punishment you think god owe you when he telling you all through the book you cannot escape keeping his commandments brothers and sisters the first commandment is to have faith in the christ because we can't justify ourselves because this dirt man messed up and transgressed and broke god's commandments therefore god had to fix it because he couldn't find one man that had never sinned because we all come from the one who did the sinning in the beginning the first one so christ had to come justify us now after he have justified us and bridge the gap so to speak between us and the father whom we sinned against even him what kind of punishments you think you god owe you and you say that you believe in christ but you refuse to keep his law verse 5 for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come where we speak the angels are not going to rule over everything okay man is but not dirt man a mortal man think about it but one in a certain place testifies saying what is man that thou art mindful of him this is in the book of psalms or the son of man that thou visitest him thou madest him a little lower than the angels thou crownedest him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet not yet but it's coming for in that he put all in subjection under him he let nothing that is not put under him he left nothing that is not put under him but now we see not yet all things put under him but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man and he did that the first and the second death he tasted the second death while he was on the cross he tasted the first death because he literally died he was dead three days and three nights for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings and we sitting over here this us being dirt with the breath of life 
we thinking it's a it's a far fetched thing for us to suffer for the name of Jesus. Are we better than the Lord? Are we better than our Master? If He suffered for us, how come we can't suffer a little bit for Him? For both He that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause He is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, "I will declare Thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto Thee?" And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, that's us, okay? We are flesh and blood. We come from the dirt. When we die, we return to the dirt. And the spirit that's in us goes back to the one who gave it. Simplicity. For, then, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. God was manifest in the flesh, Paul told Timothy, okay? That through death, he might destroy him that had the power over death, that is the devil. Because when you sin against God before times, let's go back to Adam, what we just read earlier, right? When Adam sinned, Satan gained access. He got the keys to death, okay? Death and hell. So that means, brothers and sisters, Every person after Adam who sinned when they died, being that there haven't been a redeemer yet, Satan had everybody guaranteed to join him in the lake of fire, him and the, and the other fallen angels. So when Christ came and he died for the sins of the world and was raised the third day, the devils did not understand that by Christ coming back to life, that means he would take the keys from death and hell from the devil. Therefore, everybody who was righteous, who ever died, would no longer stay dead when Christ come back the second time to wake everybody up. You can read this on your own time. Read in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, it tells you if the princes of this world knew what they were doing, if they knew that by killing Messiah, it was going to free the righteous from the grave and from eternal damnation, which we were all destined to anyway, they would have never killed the Messiah. See, the fallen angels working behind the scenes. That's why when you read the scriptures, and I'm not trying to digress, but when you read the scriptures, don't just look at it like when it's talking about your enemies, Israel. Don't just look at it as physical. It's more spiritual than anything. Our real enemies as individuals and as the nation of Israel is the fallen angels. They are enemy number one. Or I should say enemy number two. We, are, we ourselves are enemy number one. They are enemy number two. And man is enemy number three. Okay, but when Jesus came back to life three days and three nights later, he died Wednesday, came out of the grave Sabbath just before sunset. He took the keys from the devil. That's what it tells you in First John. He destroyed the works of the devil when he came in the flesh. That's why he was manifest. Because if Jesus would have never did what he did, brothers and sisters, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, the 12 patriarchs. Every righteous person who ever lived would have still woke up and went to the lake of fire at the very end if Jesus would not have come and did what he did. We need to understand this. So dirt is not justifying himself. God who made the dirt have justified dirt. Okay? Made everything right. But you got to have faith. He's given, he's given this dirt man the ability to believe and to not believe, brothers and sisters. You got to believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Okay, let's keep going, though. Verse 15. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels. Jesus didn't come in a glorified state. He came as a man, as us. He, 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 he came as dirt. Okay, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Because when Jesus came in the flesh, he looked like an Israelite. He was an Israelite. And we need to understand that too. Jesus didn't come looking like the rainbow. He didn't come looking like an olive tone. He was a black man. He was an Israelite. Okay. It said, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. The Christ know what it feel like to be tempted, brothers and sisters. We can go to him, man. 
We can go to him when we're struggling. Okay? And all of this is happening in our lifetime. We're being tempted on a daily basis. Those of us that serve God now, on a daily basis, we're, de we're being tempted to depart from the living God. The question that we must ask ourselves is, will I do that? Am I going to depart from the living God or am I going to stay faithful to my creator? We all got choices. Let's go right into chapter three. Wherefore, holy and breath, holy brethren, partakers of the holy, I mean of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God this same Christ and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after because that's why Christ is called the prophet like unto Moses but Christ as a son over his own house whose house are we if we hold fast the, the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end wherefore as the Holy Ghost saith today if ye will hear his voice this is in the Psalms as well Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Israel, our ancestors, was the ones that he's talking about. They tempted the Most High, and the Most High made them wander 40 years in the, in the, the desert. Going in a big circle. But he still blessed them even though they was wandering 40 years. You know how? Their shoes didn't rot out. Their clothes didn't get old. Okay, they feet ain't swell. But the most high made them wander to kill off all the elders, you know, because they had complained when the when the most high was trying to send them into the promised land. They did they lacked faith. It says in verse 10, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. But you gotta pay attention to this. It's not just the, the, the rest of getting into the land, brothers and sisters. It's even talking about getting into God's eternal rest. Okay? It's twofold. So it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. It is evil to not believe God because God cannot lie. So it's evil not to believe him. It says, in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceit, the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden out your heart as harden out your hearts as in the provocation for some when they had heard did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? It was the elders. And to whom and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. And I'm sorry, let me read it again. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to but to them that believed not. So when you lack faith, you're not getting into God's kingdom. That's what it's all about. You say you have faith. Why don't you keep God's commandments then? Why aren't you teaching your fellow neighbors, fellow dirt man, to not break God's commandments anymore? Since you say that you really believe. But for those of us that do have that real faith, we confess, yes, we must keep God's commandments. Faith without works is dead. You say to me, let me show you my faith without works. I'm telling you, I'm going to show you my, my faith by my works. Verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And I'm saying the same thing now. The Bible is saying it. You're not getting into God's kingdom. Neither the son who's, com who's coming first, nor the father's kingdom. You're not getting into God's kingdom except you have faith. Faith without works is dead. You say you believe in God, repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, and start keeping God's commandments. Verse, or chapter 4. Let us therefore fear lest the promise being let us let me read it slowly. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Be afraid. 
You know why? Because we're not promised an easy road to salvation. You have to, we have to individually work out, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Why the fear and trembling? Because at any moment in time, my my heart could deceive me and I'd be carried away with false doctrines, with evil mindsets. I could go back into sin in at any time if I choose to. So I got to be afraid. I got to be on guard. I got to control my thoughts. See, we are dust, brothers and sisters. But before we return to the dust, we need to get this stuff straight. We need to come into the faith. We need to believe in God who made us. We need to have faith in his word. We need to trust him because he can't lie. Man can lie, so why should we put our trust in man? Put your trust in God who cannot lie. Keep his law, statutes, and commandments, and the Most High will bless you before we return back to the dirt. That's what it's all about. We got it. We in in our small vapor of existence, physically speaking, we have the the we have a opportunity of a lifetime. Believe in the God of this Bible, the God of Israel. Repent from our past sins. Be forgiven by the same one who made us. That is unheard of. What God amongst the, the, the nations that worship false gods, which one of their gods forgives trespasses? Who came down in the form looking just like them, that particular nation, and died for them, and not just for them, but for the whole creation, the whole world. What king you know have done this? What God amongst the nations have done this? Who will you liken the God of Israel to, brothers and sisters? We are dirt and we're going to return to that dirt. But before we do, we got to fight. We got to put up a fight. We got to believe this Bible. We got to repent, man. We got to get baptized. We got to keep God's commandments before we die. If we don't, when God wakes us up, because he will. And we be and we be changed to be become an immortal. See, right now we have a chance. Better get it right now, because then it's going to be too late. Verse uh, two, it says, "For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Because you got to believe. That's what faith means. It means to believe." For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, let me keep reading, so because he explains himself. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, I mean, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time as it is said, today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Don't be hard headed. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. You got some people running around. Jesus is my Sabbath day. You are a liar. Jesus cannot be your Sabbath day because it's the fourth commandment. And that was before he came in the flesh. He even told you when he came in the flesh, Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It's a day of rest and you don't want to take advantage of this? See, that's why I'm telling you. Look, some people got too much mud in their brains so they can't hear straight. Okay? You need to unclog yourself. You need to unplug. Okay? Start dealing with the word of God and God will get all that excess dirt out of your, your head so you can focus and you can see clearly. Jesus is my Sabbath day. Get the heck out of here. Every day is the Sabbath. So why in the hell is you getting up to go to work every day then? When you're supposed to be resting. Silly. It says there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. We haven't entered into that rest yet. We keep the weekly Sabbath because it's a reminder that we work in six days. Or you could say I'm working the, the, the full extent of my life to enter into God's rest. The true Sabbath day. 
the weekly Sabbath is a reminder. For he that is entered into his rest, he also have ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us, let us labor there. What does labor mean, brothers and sisters? It means to work. You know, Rihanna had that song, work, 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 work. Yeah, we got to put in that work to get into God's kingdom. Faith, believing without doing anything is dead. <laughs> Even people that worship false gods show you that faith without works is dead. They believe in something strange, some false god, and they are proving faith without works is dead because they doing works to prove that they believe in this false god. But here you are carrying around the word of God, the most powerful book on earth, and you saying that you believe in it, but you won't do nothing that's written in it. Shame on you, dirt man and dirt woman. Shame on you. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Because the Lord said he swears you not enter into his, you not going to enter into his rest if you don't have faith. For the word of God is quick, that means it's alive, and powerful, yes it is, and sharper, yes it is, because that's why people don't want to deal with it, because it hurt. The truth hurt. What is truth? Thy word is truth, John 17 and 17. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows what's on our minds before we do, because He made us. So how couldn't, how wouldn't He know what's on our brains? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in His sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. You ain't hiding nothing. You could do whatever you, you could, look, when I was a sinner, I used to do evil in the nighttime because in my carnal mind back then, I used to think, well, man don't see me. That's how, that's how, how slow we are when we living in sin. We think, oh, as long as man don't see me, I got away with it. God sees everything and God going to make you pay for your crimes against his word. But praise the Most High that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, that whoever believes in him and repents, gets baptized and starts walking in his law, can be saved when Jesus come back. Because when Jesus came the first time, he came to be the sin offering. The second time he come, he coming to pour out the wrath on the disobedient children. Verse 14, seeing then we ha that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us could therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Plain and simple. Okay, now let's go to chapter 9 and verse 28. Hebrews 9 and 28. And it says, so we're just trying to understand this before we return to dirt. Okay, before we fall asleep, brothers and sisters, we need to understand this. And we need to get ourselves right with our maker. 9 and 28, it says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Why many and not all? Because all don't accept the Messiah. But many do. Okay? And technically, it's few out of the many in the world. But you do have those few are many. Okay? So it says, uh, And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Because he's not coming to die again. He's coming to kill. We can read that if you don't believe it. Let's go to Job 34. Job 34 and verse 15. Job 34 and 15. And it says, All flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. For dust we are, and to the dust we shall return, brothers and sisters. We need to, we need to understand that. Let's go to Psalms chapter 30. Psalms 30 and verse 9. 
Psalms 30 and verse 9. It says, What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? The answer is no. The dead know nothing, okay, as is written in Ecclesiastes. The dead have no more dealings with anything done under the sun. When you die, that's it. Your judgment is set. Why? Because you don't have a second chance. Once you die, that's it. However you lived your life in between, from the time you was born until, or, or the time you got some understanding, I should say, to the time that you fell asleep, the time that you, the spirit left you, you're going to be judged based on that. Okay? And our life is but a vapor. So that's why you got to take heed and move quickly. You know? Don't, don't use your feet and run quickly to go to sin or go to, to evil. Use your feet, rather use your brain and be quick, fast, and in a hurry. I need to get on, I need to be with God. I need to do his will. I'm trying to be saved because I believe this book, when the Lord is talking about he coming and he going to kill just about everybody. Just about everybody. The ratio going to be so extreme, seven women to one man in that day when Jesus come back. If that don't make you afraid, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Psalm 90. All flesh going to die. And man going to go back to the dirt. Unless the Lord come first. See, Paul told us, he said, look, all of us not going to see death before the Lord come. Some of us going to be standing, some of the, he talking to the saints. We ain't talking to the sinners. The sinners, the sinners we know they're going to be alive too because that's why the wrath of God is coming. But the saints, all the saints not going to die before the Lord come. Some of us going to be translated like Enoch was while the dead in Christ, they're going to rise before we be, be translated. They're going to be changed before we get translated, okay? They're going to be resurrected. We're going to be translated, those of us that's alive, caught up in the air to meet the Lord and the holy angels. And we're going to be with Jesus, our master, forever I told you brothers and sisters we got a chance of a lifetime right here the moment that you hear that preaching of the word come from a righteous Israelite or a stranger that, that was taught by Israel true Israel I'm talking about us, that's us black people I ain't talking about the Edomites the Jewish man and woman okay they are not the chosen people of God okay they're not the, the royal the royal seed it's this black people that are called Israel Okay, who don't nobody want to accept that Majority of people don't want to accept it When you first hear the preaching from Israel And a stranger that's been taught by Israel You need to believe it As long as it line up You need to believe it You need to go through the process Get baptized, repent, cleanse your mind Start keeping God's commandments In the spirit of his commandments Don't just be a robot and keep his commandments Understand the spirit behind keeping the law Okay don't go out condemning other people, okay? You walk in in the Christ, uh, you walk in, in the love of Christ, okay? Endure to the end. Endure the tribulations. Endure the hardship. The Lord is making this dirt very, very strong, okay? Because we're going through problems. See, dirt got feelings. Man, look at, look, we could, we could run down it, brothers and sisters. It's so much. Everything God made is alive. You understand? Dirt has feelings. Why you think when, when Cain killed Abel, the Bible said his blood cries out to me from the ground and the earth have opened up her mouth. The earth has feelings. Dirt we're talking about. That's what earth is. We, we are earth because we come from it. Okay? Dirt got feelings. Dirt can think. Dirt can speak. Dirt can touch. See? And dirt can die. But God wants us to live. Like I said, we got a light, we got a chance of a lifetime. Go through the process, get it right. Make your calling and election sure before you fall asleep, brothers and sisters. When you fall asleep, you're gonna kick up your feet like Jacob did and be at peace and give up the ghost. You know why? Because you're going to know, man, when God come, I know I'm going to be in that resurrection. Psalm chapter 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. 
God is eternal, brothers and sisters. Thou turnest man to destruction. The Lord allow us to be tempted. That's what it means. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, return ye children of men. The Lord allow us to go through temptations to prove us. Son, daughter, are you going to believe me? You going to listen to me or are you going to listen to this, this temptation? The Lord turns us to destruction and says, return, you children of men. Return to me. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. One day is equal to a thousand years with God, and a thousand years with God is like one day. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sheep, I'm sorry, as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth it gro and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered and withereth. For we are consumed by thy anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. We read in Hebrews, nothing is hidden from God. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Here today, gone tomorrow. You be 15, the next time you look at the clock, you be 40. You be like, Dad, where did the time go? Our life is a vapor. The days of our years are three score, three score years and 10, 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, 80 years, yet is their strength, labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Man done got so bad, this dirt man and dirt woman done got so bad, God been cutting the years down. We used to be able to live to 120. Sometimes the Lord will have mercy and let somebody live beyond 120, like he did Abraham. But man done got so evil, and we're going to read that in here in a second, man done got so corrupt now, we're going back to the days of Noah, God cutting the years shorter and shorter. We barely live in the 70, barely living, in the, barely living to 80. My grandmother, bless her soul, is 90 years old. You know how rare that is? I was just at work the other day and I heard my coworkers over I overheard them talking about some of their elders. And they were saying, yeah, my, my grandmother was uh, 106 and another lady, she, or her, rather the woman said that her uncle was 106 before he died. Another uh, Hebrew said, yeah, my, um, my grandmother was like 101. See, the Lord is very merciful. Very merciful. He, he, he turns us to destruction, meaning he, he allows us to be tempted by the devil and the fallen angels. And then he, at the same time the temptation is coming, he's saying, return to me. Come back to me. Seek me. That way when I, when I, when I, you know, when I save you from that temptation, when you overcome that, you'll learn to glorify me. And I ask you this question, brothers and sisters, is not the most high worthy of, of praise and honor, of worship? You, when you understand this book, when you understand all that he's done for this dirt man and dirt woman, is he not worthy of us glorifying him, of us testifying on his behalf, of how good he is, how holy he is, how we need to fear him? Verse 11, who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, we talk in Israel now, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and let thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of, thy, uh, the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. And let me correct myself. It's not just Israel, but Israel and the strangers that's with us. Okay, the remnant. Okay, now let's go to Psalm 103 in verse 1. 103 and verse 1. Psalm 103 and verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? 
who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And yet we have trouble doing this for our fellow brothers and sisters, even in the body of Christ. The Lord executeth righteous, righteous, righteousness and judgment for all that are that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. And yet we have trouble doing these things for our brothers and sisters, whether they be in the body of Christ or other sinners. It should not be like that, brothers and sisters. When you understand what God has done for you and how he treats you, that's how you're supposed to treat other people. That's why the Bible say, it's not that we love God first, but it's that God loved us first. That's how we know how to love. We thought we had wisdom when we was doing evil because we was practicing evil and we was getting better at doing it. We thought that was wisdom. That's not real wisdom. Real wisdom is knowing when to speak and knowing when to be quiet. Real wisdom is knowing how to give a good word in due season and how to rebuke in love. Real wisdom, as we read earlier, comes from God. Because there's no counsel, no understanding, nor wisdom against the Lord. It says, let me read verse 8 again. We're in Psalm 103 and verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, not fast to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Mercy means extending to those, giving, giving up, I'll say this, giving a free pass to those who are worthy of judgment. Having mercy. Somebody deserves something bad to happen to them, but you show them mercy. That's mercy. He will not always chide, meaning be angry, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Because why? Because Jesus, if, if he dealt with us after our sins, the Christ would have never came in the flesh. And he would have let all of us die, every human being. The end would have came. He would have came back down. He would have sat on his holy throne. He would have woke every person up, judged us out of his book, and sent us all, and I do mean all, brothers and sisters, to the lake of fire forever so this this rings bells it got to he have not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities we all deserve the lake of fire brothers and sisters even those of us that are now serving him we still deserve it because we have sinned against him before praise the lord for his mercy dirt man and dirt woman for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, and as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness under children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Plain and simple. Psalm 104. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Dirt man and dirt woman, we need to understand this about our God, about our creator. Okay, we need to reverence him, his holy name, his holy set, uh, uh, tabernacle in, in the heavens. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Because if you read Genesis 1, the earth is the dry ground. We don't live on a spinning marble blue ball that's rotating around the sun. The sun is not the, the center of the universe. The sun and the moon and the stars rotate above us inside this dome day and night. The earth is fixed. It doesn't move. Okay. We live inside of a dome 
who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains in the days of Noah it did. 22 and a half feet above the highest mountain in the world, the Lord flooded the earth. Mm. At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. Go to any beach if you want. Check it out for yourself. The water don't come but to a certain point. You know who gave it that commandment? The Most High. And don't you know the water is alive too? And it obeys God. Yes, it do. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. Who are they singing to, beloved? They sing to the Creator every day. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. You may say going down. See, that means it's, it, we're rotating. No, it just means in our peripherals, how we see things, the sun looks like it's setting, but it never sets. When it leaves our, our vision and it becomes dark for us, over in the other side of the world, this big old earth we live in, it's daylight over there. Okay, it says thou makest darkness and it is night wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from from who from God. From God. Who's hunting the prey for the lions? The most high is he sent one of them angels. I'm telling you, man, when you understand this stuff, dirt man and dirt woman, you learn to love the Lord. You learn to praise him man. You learn to appreciate God's creation, which we are, are part of his creation. Okay? It says, the young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. The evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein all things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them meat, give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them, they gather. They open. I mean, thou openest thine hand; they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face; they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath. They die and return to their dust. For dust we are, and to the dust we will return. But before we return to the dirt, brothers and sisters, we need to understand these things. We need to have faith in Messiah, first of all. Repent, get baptized in Jesus' holy name, in water. Start keeping his commandments. Tapping into the spiritual understanding of his commandments. And alongside that, we need to understand how to praise God. How to glorify him how to magnify his holy and beautiful name because when you talk about god man you got to talk about some of this stuff testify about the works of his hands the things that the most high is doing not just in your life but the things he do in the whole earth because the whole earth is full of his glory okay it says uh verse 30 thou sendest forth thy spirit they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth the glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be con consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 119. I that's one of my favorite psalms 
Psalms 104. Just so much beautiful goodness in that, man. Stuff to really ponder on, you know. Psalm 119 and verse 11. And it says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. This is the main focus, brothers and sisters. We, yeah, we're going to praise the Most High. We're going to sing, you know, beautiful songs to glorify His holy name. But we got to keep these commandments. We have to, if we say that we believe in Him, we got to keep His word. Okay? Let's skip over to verse 25. Verse 25. And it says, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Open my brain, Lord God, and teach me your commandments. I'm going to walk in them. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yeah, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in the way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts, quicken, quicken me in thy righteousness. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in, in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I have remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have com comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy testimony. I mean thy commandments. And that's that. Okay. Now, let's look at, let's go back to Psalms 130, or let's go to Psalm 139. So, Psalm 139. And then we got a, not a lot left after this. 139, and it reads, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Now, I want to say this too before we move on. You see in Psalm 119, a lot of that is talking about keeping God's commandments, how beautiful his commandments are. So if you say that you believe in Christ, you're supposed to be keeping his law. You need to understand there was a difference in the sets of laws. You had the royal law, which was the Ten Commandments, the dietary, the holy days, and some of the clean laws. But then you had the sacrificial law, which was the killing of animals. A lot of times when you read in the New Testament where Paul was talking about the law can't save you, you know, the law was against us and all that. He's not talking about God's perfect law because that's the law we're supposed to be keeping even after you have faith in Jesus. But when he was saying we don't need to deal with that law, he was talking about the sacrificial law, the killing of animals, clean animals. We don't need to do that no more. Okay? But you must keep God's royal law because that's how you prove that you love God. If you love God and you love your fellow flesh and blood man, you will not lie on your neighbor. You won't steal. You won't commit adultery. You won't do none of those things. You won't worship false gods. You won't make graven images. You won't break his Sabbath day. You won't eat unclean things. You won't teach people to do that, that it's okay to do that. You see? So all this is, is like connect the dots, okay? It's like a giant spider web. 
when the, when the, the Lord give you that understanding. But Psalm 139 verse 1, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Excuse me. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. God knows better than we know ourselves. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. I ain't even said nothing and God already knows on my brain. Okay. For dust we are and to the dust we shall return. We need to understand this stuff in the meantime. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, which that's not possible. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall, shall hold me. You can't hide from God. Dirt man and dirt woman. None of us. We cannot hide. Okay. It says, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. I told you that earlier. When I was living in sin, I used to think that I'm going to do this evil in the nighttime. Can't nobody see me. God saw me and he made me pay for that. Okay. It said, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lower parts, the lowest parts of the earth. Because he performed man from the dirt, brothers. So we read that. We all come from the dirt. That's why when we die, we go back to the dirt. Okay? Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when is you, I mean, when is yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy... See, this is why people that commit abortions, they're going to pay if they don't repent. They're going to pay. And even after they repent, the Lord's still going to chastise that behind. Because you're killing something that God have brought forth. That is murder, committing abortions. Okay? And then you're still breaking the commandment if you're using condoms. Because the Lord got the power to stop the woman's womb if he want to. So you don't have to try to outsmart God. You're, none of us is smarter than him. That was the first scripture we read in Proverbs 21 and verse 30. There's no wisdom, counsel, nor understanding against the Lord. Okay? Humble. We got to stay humble, dirt. My fellow dirt beings, we got to stay humble. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the same. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. You want to practice evil? You, you want to forsake God and his law? God, gonna, he, he got your card. He, he going to deal with you when he come. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Yes, they do. I'm a Christian. Pork chop. I'm a Christian. Oh, happy Christmas. I'm a Christian. Um, I'm going to church with you tomorrow on Sunday. They taking his name in vain. You embarrassing God. God don't do that. And he ain't teach his servants to do that. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. And this precepts back to Psalm 119. Let's go to Ezekiel. I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 20. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 20. Because we need to understand, before we die, we need to, we need to come to this knowledge. The knowledge of the truth. The word of God is truth, brothers and sisters. Plain and simple. There is no truth outside of this. Okay? Man do not understand what he think he understands. God knows everything. Him put your trust in, not man. 3 and 20, all go into one place. All are of the dust and all turn to dust again. Self-explanatory. Let's go to Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26 and verse 19. We're going to breeze through the rest of these now. It's not a lot. 
Isaiah 26 and verse 19, Isaiah 26 and verse 19, and it reads, Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. This is Messiah talking. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. Messiah is saying to his servants, to his servants, John 17 precepts, he said, I don't pray for the world, I pray for them that thou hast given me, Father. So, saints, my fellow saints, we our job is not to pray for the world. Our job is to pray for those that belong to Christ out of the world. Though they may not be serving, <clears throat> serving the living God right now, we need to pray that they repent in due time. And they will. And we do need to pray for kings and all them that are in authority. We do need to pray for all men everywhere that God grant them repentance. But we know it's not, you know, everybody not going to listen. God going to grant everybody repentance, you know, a chance to rather. But the Most High say the earth going to cast out her dead, right? Why? Because you got two resurrections coming. The first for the saints and the second for them that barely going to get in. And mo But most of them people that come up in the second going to hellfire. The Lord say, come and enter into your chambers. Where's our house at? Where's man's resting place? The dirt. He said, and shut the doors about you. Fall, you're going to fall asleep. He said, hide, it, hide yourself as it was for a little time until my wrath is, is, is past. And he said, because look, the Lord is coming. He coming out of his place, out of the third heaven. He going to peel back these, these heavens. Okay. We live in a dome. He going to peel it back. Everybody going to see him. He going to come down here. And he said he going to punish the earth for her iniquity, the inhabitants of the earth. That means flesh man and flesh woman, dirt man and dirt woman who got puffed up. How, how did that look, brothers and sisters? Imagine the clay image that you made and you give it the ability to talk and think and move and all that. And this thing going to rise up against you who made it. Imagine how silly that looks. The image that you made that looks like you is going to talk back to you telling you, I'm not going to do nothing you tell me to do. And you're going to be okay with it. You're going to be laughing like, are you serious? You're kidding me. All I got to do is think it and you're done. But see, God is merciful. We read that. He's slow to anger. He's gracious. He's plenteous in mercy. He don't chide forever. He don't retain his anger forever. But on this day, the day of the Lord, when he come after Jacob's shovel, Woe, woe unto the dust that would not hearken unto the voice of the Almighty. Woe. Okay, we finished that. Now, let's go to chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 12. And it says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Think about all the waters that's in the earth, brothers and sisters. The Lord measured it out. He know the, the he know the the weight of the water because he held the sea in his hand. That's how big our God is, man. Oh my gosh. Whew. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and met it out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Tick tock, tick tock. Who got the answer? Who could tell us? Somebody know. Somebody know who did this. I tell you the truth. Israel know who did it. Because we the priesthood. God taught. He, our ancestors the one that wrote this down. So we know. It was the Most High. It was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords who did all this. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor have taught him? Nobody. So since nobody taught God and God know all of this. Don't you think it's wise dirt man and dirt woman to fear him? To be afraid of him. He know the thoughts of our brain before we do. And he tell us about it in the book. With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding. Nobody. 
nobody behold the nations he didn't say the nations besides israel he said the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance behold he taketh up the isles as a very little thing what that's why it's written in the psalms what is man that thou art mindful of him us you mean god care about us so much that when the first man sinned god didn't want man to die forever so god set up a master plan to save man from having to die forever that's how much god loved this this dirt when adam sinned he jehovah's talking to to jesus the father and he says behold he said look the man has become like like one of us like one of us to know good and evil now lest he take and put it put his hand forth and take it a tree of life and live forever so he kicked him out. Why? Because man would have been stuck a sinner forever. And you can't die for a, a person that lives forever. But you can die for the one who don't live forever. To redeem them. Man, who have taught God this? Nobody, right? Nobody. Now as us being dirt, we still got some understanding. We can get a little bit of understanding, okay? And the book is written with all our getting, get some understanding. Look, we need to know this about our God. Okay? I didn't want to just focus on the fact that when we when we uh, die, we don't go to heaven. Look, that's common sense. If you go to heaven when you die, why is you still looking at this person's body in the in the casket? OK. Or why is their ashes still in the in the urn if they didn't went to heaven? They whole person should be going to heaven. I wanted to focus on in the meantime, from us living all the way to death, we need to understand a few things. We need to understand we got to believe in our king. We got to repent from breaking his commandments. We got to get baptized in his name. We got to keep his laws. And then we, we, we give up the ghost at the end. But we got to get this right. And in the meantime, we got to understand the splendor of the Lord. I like that word, splendor. I had a poor vocabulary a long time ago. Let's continue. We was at uh, 15. Let's skip down to verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. He didn't say all nations besides Israel. He said all nations. That means us too. That's the problem with Israel back in the old days. They got puffed up. Oh, we Israel, we special. And God ain't going to do nothing to us. Look, that's the wrong attitude. As bad as God is doing up our people, Israel, for breaking his laws, you know the nations got it coming. And if he did us that bad over all these millennia, what you think he going to do to the nations? You see what I'm saying? Verse 18. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? People be trying. Graven images here and there. Yeah, when Jesus the Christ come back, when God come back, we going to find out. We going to see. They going to be throwing them idols, them graven images. They going to be throwing. That's not mine. Because they going to be so scared. They going to be they going to be about ready to give up the ghosts. Just for fear from seeing the king. Praise him. Let's skip down to verse 21. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Brothers and sisters, I urge you, look up the definition of a circle. It's not a ball. Okay? It's flat like a CD disc. So God is sitting in his great throne. And he's looking down and the, the whole world looks like a circle to him. It's a dome. That's why at the end, you know, you could read in Revelation, he's going to cause a worldwide earthquake. That's because he's going to take this earth, he's going to take it in his hand and he's going to shake it like that. Simplicity. Before he come, he's going to peel the, the dome back. That's how we're going to see him. For five months, the Bible testifies. He gonna turn. He gonna tell the sun turn off the lights. He gonna tell the moon turn off your lights. He gonna throw the stars down. Simplicity, okay? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Plain and simple, okay? Let's skip down to verse twenty-five. To whom then will ye liken me, or who shall I be equal? Saith the Holy One. I say, personally, nobody, Most High, nobody can be compared to you. 
these false gods the people that worship these false gods they just as dumb as the false gods they worship and that's in the book let's skip down to 28 Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. God don't get tired. And when he chains our vile bodies to match his, at the end, we not going to be tired no more neither. And we can read that too. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, no more tears, none of that. He, he told us earlier in Isaiah, we're going to have the dew of the morning for strength. Okay, let's go to Daniel chapter 12. Daniel 12 and verse 2. We're almost done, brothers and sisters. Daniel 12 and 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. And we're just going to read two verses here, verse 9, verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. We all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We all going to be judged for the things that have been done in this body. That's why it behooves us in this meantime, we know that we're dust, we know we're going back to the dust. In the meantime, we don't need to play games no more, people. We need to get our mind right. We need to focus on serving the King, the Holy One of Israel. We need to learn to fear His holy name, keep His law, statutes, and commandments before we die. Because we will die unless the Lord come first. And even then, if you don't die and the Lord come, if you haven't been walking right in your lifetime, you still going to die, but you're going to die forever. You want to make that first resurrection. You got a chance right now. I got a chance right now. As I'm taking advantage of this, you need to take advantage of it. Okay? Don't look, understand this too, brothers and sisters. When we was living for the devil, boy, we was I mean, all the eggs was in that basket. We was gung-ho, rising up early, putting our brain to sin. The Lord constantly trying to talk to us. Grandma calling, what you doing today, baby? Can you take me to the grocery store? Can you help me with some bags? And we making up excuses. Why? Because we want to go sin. And the Lord is using our grandmother to keep us from going to go sin, but we too dumb to see it when we living in transgression. We get into this word, we need to be super zealous, not in the wrong manner. We don't need to be vexing those that are on the outside. We don't need to be talking down to people that's on the outside. But we need to be super zealous for serving God. We need to be crucifying our flesh every day. We need to be carrying our cross every day, walking in humility. Keeping the everlasting joy of Christ. Why? Because we know even when we die, we know we're going to be with Christ anyway. So it don't matter. That's what keeps us bold as a lion, but harmless as doves, wise as serpents gone forth as sheep amidst the wolves that that mindset you understand our brains is the real battlefield so when we start following god and god starts showing us the truth about our our minds that's what he means crucify your flesh on a daily basis because evil thoughts come up every day and you got to learn to crucify them meaning kill it don't let it overcome you okay because the latter state will be worse than the first Somebody understand what I mean. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. We're going to see where man is at right now. Overall, for, for those of us that serve the living God, who are called saints, we know this is not about us. It used to be, but praise God, he delivered us from the, the powers of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay? Genesis 6 and chapter 5, and it reads, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Plain and simple. 
And that's where we at. There's only, I was telling some brothers, let's go to uh, Mark chapter 7. I was telling some brothers this past week, there's only been two times in this creation that God have repented that he made man and set his heart to destroy majority of man. Only twice, in the days of Noah and again at his second coming. Because these are the, the two extremes. You understand? Man, this, this, this dirt is something else. Flesh and blood man is something else. Puffed up mind, arrogant attitude, and for what? You be like, dude, when you go in the bath and you take a shower and that ring around the tub, because that's you coming off of you, reminding you that you're dirt, how could you be lifted up with pride even against the Lord? Because we read in the Psalms, they be speaking wickedly against the Lord. How could you do that? Don't you know it's only by his grace that he even allowed you to speak them vain words about him? Don't you get it? But your silly brain got you thinking, I'm in control. Don't nobody control me. I control myself. I do whatever I want to do. God is allowing you to think that you're going to do whatever you want to do. He the one that told you in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. So God got to let you do these things, man. Oh, let me not get off, off topic. Mark 7 and verse 21. I'm about to get fired up. Mark 7 and 21. And it reads... For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, which is idolatry, wickedness, deceit, which is lying, lasciviousness, which is sexual immorality, selfie generation nowadays, okay, it's all about self. Look at me, I'm so pretty. You are dirt, damn it. You are dirt and nothing more. What's so pretty about you? You see what I'm saying? Even when God came in the flesh, he, the books say he didn't even have an appearance that we should desire his beauty. Now, if God humbled himself like that, why is you on the Facebook and on social media taking all these pictures of yourself with different clothes on? Don't nobody care. Humble yourself. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Foolishness, man, is what this stuff is. 23 all these evil things come from within and defile the man they come out of this out of your brain that's why this defiles us because it starts in the in the mind it starts in the brain so when the lord is telling us except you pick up your cross and follow me and deny yourself you can't be my disciple because if you're going to follow christ faith without works is dead if you're going to follow the messiah you have to learn to crucify this because when you stop this from doing what it wants to do, it'll it won't manifest itself. When you look at someone doing evil, you know that their mind was there first. That's why they're acting it out. And we used to do the same thing before we got in this truth. So let us not get let us not get puffed up neither. Let's go to Ezekiel 36 and 26. But we're gonna get some hope. Okay. We're gonna get some hope from the most high. Those of us that are serving God, we understand this already. Those that are not, they will understand if they be grafted into the, the olive tree. 36 and 26, and it reads, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the, the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. The Lord is saying, I'm going, when you get in my word, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to take that old carnal mind from you. I'm going to give you my heart. You're going to have that same testimony of David, King David, a man after God's own heart. Okay? And when we follow Christ, that's the way to do it. Because Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So you want to be like the Most High? You got to follow Christ. I'm talking to us who are dirt. I ain't saying repeat what Satan repeated. That he want to be, he want to overthrow them. I know I'm not saying that. I'm talking about we want to be like the most high. We want to be perfect like he's perfect. We want to be holy like he's holy. We want to be what he set Adam to be in the beginning. Perfect. And to rule like he rules. We got to follow Christ. Walk in his footsteps. Okay. He said he going to give us a new heart and a new spirit. Even at the first resurrection, the same thing. 
He going, we got the mindset now that we're working on every day, I'm working on crucifying the flesh, denying myself. I, we read in Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful above all things and it's desperately wicked. Hey, confess and admit. The human brain want to do evil. Yes, we do. I'll speak for myself then if you don't want to admit. I, my heart want to do evil sometimes. Even being a servant of God, being baptized and, and all my past sins being washed away. Look, the human mind is something else. But I know for a fact I deny myself every day. I'm trying. I'm striving against myself every single day. I weep over my own sins. I don't condemn other people in their transgressions. Because I'm working on myself every day. Okay? I know at the first resurrection, God will give me a body to match the mind. Okay? That's what I'm working for. Let's go to Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. And I ain't saying I don't tell people when they sin that they're wrong. I do, but I use wisdom behind that. But I'm saying I don't condemn somebody else when they transgress. Because I remember where I came from. The best I do is I try to uplift them. I try to say, come on, don't do that because that goes against the commandments. But look, I know it's, it's a little rough, but you can do this if you put your mind to it. It's not hard, okay? Otherwise, the Lord is lying when he said to keep his... For to, to stay in the love of God is to keep his commandments. His commandments not grievous. Hey, the commandments are not hard. And I ain't just saying be a robot and keep the law. I'm talking about walking in the spirit of the law. Understanding the simplicity of the law. Understanding the deepness of his law. Okay? Let me continue because I'm talking too much. Luke 6 and 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh you want to know what's on somebody's mind listen to them talk psalm 51 and verse 10 psalm 51 and verse 10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, a clean heart. Purify my, my filthy mind. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Because when this get right, this get right, and this get right, your whole self, your whole body, it starts up here. Okay? Let's go to Proverbs 4 and 23. 4 and 23, and it reads, Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Jesus just told us what those issues were. Okay? Let's go to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. And it reads, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And truth be told, to those that are outside of the camp, all you need to do is look to the heavens. He is literally right there. His ears are open to the cries of the righteous. Okay, his eyes are over the righteous. The Lord's face is against them that do evil. You understand? But if you if you're a sinner and you don't know God yet, but you you're you know you want to make a change in your life, a positive change, you want to serve God. Maybe you've heard this lesson. Maybe you've been hearing things this past week or this past month. When you search for the Most High. He will incline his ear to you as long as your prayer request is that God grants you repentance and that he forgive you. God is a merciful God and he is love. He wants to save this dirt man and dirt woman. Okay. Cry out to God. He will hear you. He'll forgive you. He'll purify you. He'll cleanse you. He'll give you his holy word. He'll give you his law, statutes and commandments. And then you do what you got to do. He said, if you seek me, he said, and you will seek me and find me with you when you search for me with all your heart. Put your mind to it. You'll get it done. Let's go to Proverbs chapter three and verse five. Proverbs three and verse five. And it reads, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That's for those of us in the body of Christ, really. Because we have a tendency in the body of Christ, like I was speaking about earlier, it's a lot of respect to persons going on right now. And that shouldn't be done. 
okay? That is evil. Clicking up and all this. We one body, man. Imagine if the fish, all the, all the fish that look alike, but they got different clicks. Stop it. We one body, different members. We all supposed to be unified. We all supposed to be caring for each other. That's what it's supposed to be. It ain't supposed to be all this, I'm with this camp, I'm with that camp. Look, we are one family. The Lord say, don't, tr he say, trust in him with all our heart and don't lean to our own understanding. Stop thinking that we're smarter than him. We've been reading scriptures all day proving, hey, God know everything. We don't know jack squat except for what the most high let us understand. Okay? Humility before honor, brothers and sisters. Before that resurrection come, before we fall asleep, we need to be humble. We need to understand this. Let's go to Mark chapter 12. Mark 12 and verse 28. And we got three more after this and then we're done. Mark 12 and 28. <clears throat> and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's in Deuteronomy. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Every stitch of our human existence as dirt bodies, breathing with God's breath, we all need to love him with every stitch of our existence. First and foremost. Okay. This and verse 32. I mean, I'm sorry, 31. And the second is like, namely, this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. The first commandment of all, have faith in Jesus the Christ. Okay, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you could try to love God outside of believing in Christ, it ain't gonna work. Okay, faith. Without works is dead, plain and simple. And you love your neighbor as yourself. When you love your neighbor as yourself, that means if I see my neighbor eating some pork, I'm going to say something to them. As long as I discern that they are approachable, because you don't reprove a, 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 a scorner, because the Lord said you're going to get a block to yourself. They're going to be ready to fight you. But you rebuke a wise man, he'll love you. He'll appreciate it. Okay? So we got it. Wisdom is the principal thing. If I see my neighbor breaking a Sabbath day, I'm going to say something. Wisdom is justified of her children. So we got to use wisdom, okay? But when you love your neighbor as yourself, you don't break the Ten Commandments pertaining to your neighbor. You ain't going to lie on them. You ain't going to steal from them. You're not going to desire that man's wife or that, that, that woman's husband. You're not going to uh, murder them. None of that, okay? And if you love the Lord, you're going to keep all his commandments, now, let's go to Psalms 94. And we got two more after this and then we're done. Psalms 94. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Psalms 94 and verse 8. And it reads, Understand, ye brutish among the people. Brutish means stupid or fools. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools. When will ye be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastiseth the heathen, shall he not correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. Because the lake of fire is not set up yet, but it will be when Jesus comes. And it's going to be right outside Jerusalem. And the only two that's going to be in there for the thousand years, the beast and the false prophet. Come judgment day, all the sinners and all the fallen angels, even the devil himself going in that same lake of fire. Forever. Verse 14. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. And that is us, Israel. And the strangers that cling to us, they're going to be one with us as well in the Holy Land when the Most High come back. Let's go to Genesis 3 and verse 19. 
The Lord said he know the thoughts of man that they are vanity. I told you. The Lord know. He know us better than we know ourselves. So let's don't play games no more. Okay? Don't lean to your own understanding no more. Stop thinking you know everything and let the Lord tell you what he what you what you're supposed to know. Okay? No need for pride and arrogance. Humility, meekness, gentleness, goodness, faith, hope, love, joy, long suffering, temperance. These things we ought to be manifest, uh, ma making manifest in our in our uh, our lives on a daily basis. Okay, three and nineteen. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Let's go to Micah chapter six and verse eight. Micah 6 and verse 8 and this will be it he have showed thee O man what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God so that's the lesson for dust we are and to the dust we shall return I pray somebody got some understanding on this lesson uh, the Lord be magnified Grace, peace, and mercy to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that's with us. Happy Sabbath again. Enjoy the rest of the Lord's holy day. Peace.